with the present daily free energy device, no battery, no power supply whatsoever. However, there is a need for the battery to start up. I'm not gonna show you that video. I'm gonna show only the preview of that video and then I'm gonna try to mount from the three parts one for video. But what I'm gonna go for is a deep analysis of the schematic. The schematic was posted on Russian site and I found that interesting. That will help also to understand Aqua devices as Aqua use the same microchip. So for those patient enough, I believe it's worth your time. The device started. Um, switching the device, I have a nanosecond impuls. You see the two diodes, and then you see small neon. The energy started, flipping the switch, and we see the light bulb. Now he is disconnecting the battery, taking with him, and go. We have a wave. Now, what we're going to be dealing with at a certain point is, that's it. This is the zero of the amplitude. And this is the maximum. So, what's going to happen if we start to implement a high voltage, very narrow peaks? that will start from zero and go to approximately 3% before the very top of it. That would be a Lithuania experiment, 50 Hz, and the peaks could be 1.2 MHz, but it could be much lower. It looks like that basic uh, Концепт is something that makes a sense. Большое спасибо, ребята, сериал Странника. Делайте очень хорошую работу. And then we're going to two videos on that side. Those are the videos of Dali. You could see those two parts. There are three parts. Only two of them exist on that side. We could go to another side. And that would be live internet side. And we could see all of the three parts in here. And I'm going to try to put those parts together and make a video out of it. So remember, uh, live internet, пожалуйста, заходите на live internet. Спасибо большое. Умные русские ребята, русскоговорящие ребята, сделали схему. One, impulse forming circuitry. Second, impulse forming circuitry. And that magic coil. Magic coil is made out of one winding that is connected to the grid bridge. Second coil that is made out of a coaxial cable RG58 and is shorted at the end. Third coil that is only with a capacitor not connected anywhere. Fourth winding that is connected to the impulse forming part. This is a, in, an inverter. So what it's doing is it's taking a 12 volts from the battery here and it's changing it to let's say to 20 or 110 volts. Depends where in the world we are. So we have an AC here, we have a DC from the battery. So it could be car battery, any battery. When we close that switch we will have 12 volts coming here and 12 volts coming here. As that switch is open, the only what we're gonna see after closing that switch is the LED light bulb, 220 volts, 30 watts, say, will light up. At the same time, that 12 volt is exactly the same 12 volts and exactly the same 12 volts here. It. So from the battery, the 12 volts should be connected here and should be connected to here. Now we have a power to those two 
blocks. Each one has a switch. Let's concentrate right now on the lower block. The lower block has a TL494 in it. There we go. The guy on that video is gonna say he is operating in nanosecond width. So each one is nanoseconds. So let's see what we have in here. I'm gonna try to speed up, guys. And now we have a comparator, oscillator, and then collector output voltage is 40 volts at 200 milliamps. Okay, in order for us to understand how the TL494 works, it works in many concepts used by a free energy community guys, and uh, it's good to understand how it works, even for those who are not familiar with it. It's simple. And I'm gonna go in details to it for some who think they can make a change. Because we cannot underestimate anyone. We all are fighting for a better future. So let's go to it. This is a, a chip. You have uh, two transistors. There are two outputs. 11 and 10 is collector and emitter of the Q2. And we have 9 and 8. It's the emitter and collector of Q1. In this particle schematic that I'm not gonna touch, it's not important. We have eight not being used, nine is being shorted to the ground exactly with a meter of the working input, I mean output. So this duty cycle we have a 50 percent. So and it's work it, it, this works in asynchronic mode which means that we should have a flip flap in here but that flap is not being utilized so we have a flip zero flip zero flip zero so the junction is being open or closed there might be some questions about terminology to use when i say open means no conducting when i say junction is closed means conducting so now on the base of the transistor we have equal zero or equal one we treat zero as a zero volts and one as the maximum amplitude of the square signal both of them the width of them would be equal in time now this guy is giving us this is another microchip is giving us five volts from whatever the the, the, the voltage is up to whatever 40 volts 38 volts it will always give us 5 volts, so we have 5 volts in here. The 5 volts goes to the power of, 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 of this chip, but at the same time it goes to here. To that resistor goes to the base here and then goes down. And the transistor is open. So now we have, uh, let's say, another scenario. Uh, it, it closes, it goes like that, like that, like that, like that, and that crea cre uh, creates the closure of this one, and then eventually all the current flow like that. We may also see if that junction is closed, that this transistor will be capacitively discharged, and it would go like that. like that Транзистор VT2 через диод VT1 заряжается емкость затвора транзистора VT1 и транзистор VT1 открывается. Когда открывается транзистор Q2, у нас наше смещение закорачивается на землю и транзистор VT2 закрывается. 
то время как крыт транзистор Q2, через него начинает разряжаться затворная емкость транзистора VT1. Через резистор R17 и на затвор. Okay. So one more time. Closure. Go like that. Go like that. Like that. And then we have a closed circuit. Вот таким образом. Вот и весь цикл работы транзистора VT1. That's the microchip. TL494. Let's see what we have in here. That's the Q1 that I was showing. That's the Q2. That's the collector emitter, collector emitter. Now we have a LEC13. We put 0 on LEC13 or we put 5 volt at LEC13. We either causing those two guys to work together or work flip-flop mode, which would be asynchronic mode. But for those Russian guys who wants to understand, I'm going to include Russian as well. Now, leg 12 is giving us the voltage for the chip. The reference would be 14. That would be the height of the peak regulation. And we have a ground wire. Now, the dead time comparator how much of the dead time do we have is on leg number four and then we have a uh, two input amplifiers which we can play with and then we have a uh, equal response on this side if you want to so let me go to the russian explanation beautiful one спасибо большое очень хороший мне очень нравится не инвертируемый вход Первого усилителя ошибки, вторая нога, инвертируемый вход первого усилителя ошибки. And I forgot to say, we have an oscillator in here and um, a leg six and five. That's how we can regulate the frequency of oscillation. Шестнадцатая нога, неинвертируемый вход второго усилителя ошибки. Пятнадцатая нога. So the voltage here on 16, then we have no inversion, and 15 we have an inversion. Третья нога это у нас обратная связь. Четырнадцатая нога это опорное напряжение плюс 5 вольт. Двенадцатая нога это не микросхемы. Седьмая нога это у нас общий провод земля схема может работать как в однотактном так и в двухтактном режиме если на 13 ноге у нас 0 вольт то схема работает в однотактном режиме если на 13 ноге плюс 5 вольт то схема работает в двухтактном режиме если схема работает в однотактном режиме то транзисторы q1 и q2 работают синхронно если на схема работает в двухтактном режиме то транзисторы q1 и q2 работают в противофазе Задержка, которая определяется у нас четвертой ногой. Flip-flop, flip-flop, and number four. Number four is giving a time of the interval. So this guy is giving us at leg number 10 and leg number 9 impulse. Those goes to the base on the transistor and then collector base on another transistor here. And the base then is sort of terminated with a transformer but the transformer has a two windings and one of them the middle top is going to 12 volts and that's the 12 volts that comes from the battery at first as an impulse so let's say we have that impulse we get the 12 volts we have that k1 switch close and then it goes here now from here we have one way here or one way this way but nothing is going to happen because this is so is this junction collector emitter junction here and this junction here so what we need is 
if we have a voltage on the base then we close it and if we have a voltage on the base then we close it so this guy is giving us the signal flip flop now what we having in here is flip flop flip flop now what we have in here is flip flop flip flop from the other side so now we see that this winding is connected to the Gretz bridge which is a rectifier and goes to 150 volts so this winding has to give us at least 150 wa uh, volts so now we know at least what this should represent so where this 150 volt goes well the 150 volt goes in here to this part more time battery switch starting the device 12 volts down 12 volts up 220 volts AC here this thing will have a signal 12 volts goes down, goes to the switch here, goes in here, and start the device working. So let me disconnect 12 volt battery here <coughs> with disconnected voltage, but we have the impulses in here. And there is a time difference between those symbols and that resonance circuit in here. 12 volt no longer being powered from that battery. Receive the AC on this side, a number of capacitors in here for the temporary storage. Then through that switch to that grid bridge, back impulse here. We didn't go yet to this part. <coughs> so this part we have, let's assume that we have the 12 volt battery. That 50, 150 goes, goes in here and <coughs> comes here. And we're dealing with 74HC, HCT00 or the Russian chip, which would be KP1554LAZ. And that would be, this is the guy. It's pretty fast, it's 70 nanoseconds. And it has high speed access time. That was one of the things with all of this Kapanazet stuff and the, all of the uh, Kua stuff that might matter. Fast impulse, fast rising and falling edge. Now you have a block diagram of it. We have two of them, one in here and one here and then we see how the impulses goes power regulator so it does is you give it any voltage say seven and a half to 35 volt in results you get five volts that's what you need so you have a zener diode in here and a part of the p filter um 100 nanofarads for the ripples rejection only three legs so we have uh, two of them one in here and one in here because we have a uh, 12 volts from that battery to this point and from that battery to this point for the moment only we have a uh, 12 volts come here five volts coming back regulated going to this guy and uh, going to this guy so her leg number 14 like that like that like that like that like that and the end of this part is a, a, a pulse width modulation so it's 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 establishing the width of an impulse so you're not going like that and from here to this guy and if you recall, RG58 is our coaxial cable. And we already have on the collector of that transistor very nice P 
peaks impulses that I was talking about on this video. I didn't show those peaks, but they look like a zigzag in here. And then you have a two Schottky diodes, pretty powerful one, KP203, two of them. On 150 volts coming here, we have a neon that will give us indication of the presence of that 150 volts. So that would allow us to adjust the frequency if you want to, because we would see those impulses. Then it goes to the drossel, which is the uh, chalk. That thing will stop any AC coming on the other side of the transformer we have uh, this Gaussian shape of the peak. What is that diode for? Well, if we have a standing wave that is coming back and this acts as a transmitter because that standing wave is hitting back, is accumulating on this winding and eventually hitting back to the collector. So it should overheat the transistor, but it's not doing it because of the diode. The diode is simply shorting it when it comes back. The best way to explain that is as if we have a, a sine wave. This is the negative from zero to minus is negative part and from zero to plus is positive so the diode is only giving us conductance one way let's come back to this one now we need to concentrate on this part and the role of the coaxial cable the rg58 au is 50 ohm so if we say that we have a matching impedance of this part of 50 ohm then the signal should go through that coaxial cable and eventually if we connect in here 50 ohm resistor it would dissipate on that resistor we would have a perfect match of impedance let's say we have that coaxial cable open or short guess what this guy would never see it short. It would see it open as if it didn't exist. So my understanding is whether you short it or you're not shorted it at resonance. You will still have mismatch of impedance at the end of it. That energy could not go further. It goes back and hit that circuitry back so we have another diode here and uh, then we have an impulse actually dissipating through the diode so it's good if that diode has a heat sink on it but imagine that we have a series of impulses coming in here that are modulating that signal with a very nice peaks Let me take a break. I got tired of uh, doing that video. It's, it's pretty much time consuming. So I decided to split it on a few parts. Definitely you guys need to see the video in all of the three pieces that I found put together and translated. So then you will have a full picture of what I'm relating to, what I'm translating and where are we going to with that. It's so far not that difficult. Still thinking on that how to probably translate a schematic and 
the concept of creating free energy. We've got to understand free energy must come from somewhere and be converted to usable form of the energy. One of the major factors contributing to energy extraction is ground wire. So some of us say, hey, we don't have any wire, but we need to have a ground wire. So one of the concepts behind that is that we have electrostatic pump and that electrostatic point has a certain time delay. And of course a huge capacitive reactance. So when there is a need for electron to be sucked from the ground, there is an inertia and the next impulse is requesting the action but in the meantime inductively coupled load circuitry with light bulbs is dissipating the power. It's uh, kind of hard to explain exactly what's going on. If it was that easy we would have already Tesla and other guys doing that well we don't have it and not because it doesn't exist we don't have it because there is a greed everybody who gets something deletes the video shut up try to deal with somebody make some money including Akua Tariel Kapanadze how many guys did we have? Newman Stanley Mayer that guy so many of dead guys and yet anybody who makes it he wants to patent nobody's gonna give you the patent they not allow you to cr corrupt the wealth of 1% and we are only 99 thing guys I'm working on Coleman that's what I'm doing is just just because I want to contribute anyhow powers of the world energy powers screw you all have a good one this is Wesley and it's Wesley news